Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Mengs, and I welcome you guys back to another episode of Unit Analysis, the series where we take a look at certain units from Advance Wars in great detail. Today we're checking out the Cruiser. Uh, in the previous episode, I did the Missile, and a lot of you guys seem to like that, and I got a bunch of comments asking me to review the Cruiser next. So what can we say about the Cruiser? Well, it's a naval unit, and it sucks. Don't build it. All right. Leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed this episode. And... All right, all right, all right. We're actually going to be taking a look at the cruiser. Don't you guys worry. So, in order to explain why cruisers are very rarely seen, we have to explain why naval units are almost never seen. There are two primary reasons behind this. Uh, first of all, ships are very overpriced in Advanced Wars. I mean, they're simply just not worth their costs. A battleship costs 28,000. It's a lot of money to pay for a glorified rocket that can move on water. The other reason why ships are very seldom seen in Advanced Wars is that uh, you have air units. And air units kind of invalidate naval units because they can move both on land and sea. They're most of the time faster, uh, they're cheaper, and many of the air units counter naval units. And that makes naval units incredibly hard to use. Now that's not to say you never see naval units in Advanced Wars. Um, on certain maps you're kind of forced into it, especially if you're playing on an island-based map with no airports. But even on such maps, you'll need a big economy in order to actually afford boats. Because as you can see, the cruiser is very expensive. It costs 18,000, which is more than a medium tank. And it's only 2,000 less than a fighter, which is a lot better at dealing with air units. So the cruiser has two primary jobs. It hunts submarines and it kind of deals with aircraft. Now I'm saying kind of because it's not very good at dealing with aircraft. It's kind of like a subpar anti-air unit, if anything. In terms of its stats, it has a move of 6, so it's relatively fast, and it has a vision of 3, so it's not bad at scouting, but it certainly isn't the best scout. Uh, if you really want a good scout, then you really want to build a submarine, because submarines have a vision of 5, and they also have the advantage of being able to dive, so they can hide themselves from enemies, so they're very good scouts in, in that regard. And uh, they have about as much vi vision as a recon, so if scouting is what you want, then definitely invest those 2,000 extra into a submarine rather than a cruiser. The cruiser is okay at scouting, but it's not fantastic at it. What the cruiser does have is a very good reserve of fuel and ammo. It has 99 fuel and 9 shots, so it can go a very long time before needing resupplies which makes it sort of rare as far as naval units goes, because that's one thing they tend to need, uh, fuel. Now, as I said, the submarine deals with two kinds of units, submarines and air units. Uh, it cannot attack other cruisers, landers, or battleships. Uh, this was changed in Dual Strike. They were able to do a little bit of chip damage to them in that game, but not much. It was just a little bit so that they could actually do something. But in Advanced Wars 1 and Advanced Wars 2, they cannot attack those units. However, they deal really well with submarines. They do 90% base damage. And before I attack, I just want to specify something because I know I'm going to get a lot of comments about this. A lot of people would be pointing out that I'm playing as a Drake here, and Drake gets better ships. But I am playing without CO powers enabled. And when you do that, you actually turn off the CO's day-to-day -day bonuses. For all intents and purposes, I am only playing as Drake because I like his theme and because I thought it was fitting since I'm doing a naval unit review. Uh, so all the COs that are present in this uh, particular battle here have their day-to-day -day powers disabled. So what you're seeing here are units without their day-to-day -day powers. So just thought I'd point that out. Now, as you can see, the cruiser deals really well with the submarine. It does 90% base damage and takes very little back. So if you ever get a chance to shoot at a submarine with a cruiser, you should always take it because that means that the cruiser will instantly earn itself in. Uh, the cruiser is also one of the only units available that can target a submerged sub, the other unit being another sub. So, you know, when a sub dives under, it, you, it can't be attacked by anything else. So, uh, those are the only two options that you have. Now, against battlecopters and transport copters, cruisers are pretty strong, at least if they get the first strike. They do 150% base damage to such units, so they're pretty good Granted, they get the ability to shoot first. Um, they are uh, a little bit stronger than traditional anti-air in this regard. However, against fighters and bombers is where they start to struggle a little bit. Uh, against fighters, they only do 55% damage. Uh, this is not bad per se, but it's not fantastic either, considering it is an anti-air unit. But 
Very rarely will you get to shoot at a fighter with a cruiser. Fighters are just so much more mobile than cruisers, so unless you're playing Fog of War and you manage to get a sneak attack in, or your opponent does a serious blunder, this will almost never happen. Against bombers, cruisers also struggle quite a bit. They only deal 65% base damage and they take a healthy amount of damage back from the bomber, because cruisers are quite frail to things that can deal damage to them. So this is not a great outcome, considering this is supposed to be an anti-air unit, which is why I say that the cruiser is primarily a submarine hunter first, and an anti-air unit second. There isn't really a decent anti-air naval unit. The cruiser does this as a secondary job. So not really going so well for it. Now, if we turn things around and we take a look at what uh, other units do to the cruiser, uh, we can see that submarines, if they try to attack, they don't do well. They do 25% damage, which means that uh, if you see a damaged cruiser, Submarine can certainly kill it, but uh, if the cruiser is anywhere near healthy, the submarine will take quite a lot of damage back. So this is not uh, advised. Battleships will absolutely demolish cruisers. They do 95% base damage, so it's basically a coin flip whether or not they get killed or not. Just like when you attack a transport with a battlecopter. Now, of course, if you're playing as Drake, he does get that extra defense, so his cruisers can't be one-shot by battleships, but they still uh, live with, like, around one or two health. It's not really that great. Bombers will also annihilate cruisers, dealing 85% base damage. And uh, this is the engagement that is most likely to happen, since the bomber has more movement and greater mobility than the cruiser. So whenever you see a bomber, a cruiser is not a good response to it. Not unless you can somehow hide the cruiser in a reef and get the first strike on the bomber. But perhaps the most egregious of all is the Battlecopter. The Battlecopter annihilates the cruiser, dealing 55% base damage. If the Battlecopter gets to strike first, the cruiser will be severely crippled. This is not a good engagement, considering this is supposed to be an anti-air unit. Also keep in mind that the cruiser is twice as expensive as the Battlecopter. So if the Battlecopter gets to strike first, it doesn't go well for the cruiser. Now, if you somehow manage to have the cruiser on a reef, this helps a little bit because the reef gives a little bit of extra defense. And this matters a lot against the Battlecopter, as you can see right here. It turns the engagement quite around. And against the Bomber, it can help a little bit, but it still doesn't help that much. So, as you can see, the cruiser is not fantastic. If it gets attacked first, it usually doesn't come out of the engagement very well. However, we're not quite done with the damage numbers of the cruiser. The cruiser is extremely vulnerable um, from attacks uh, made by land. Tanks don't really hurt it that much. They only do around 5% damage to it. So this isn't something that you'll end up feeling. Maybe you'll lose a hit point like I did here if you're unlucky. However, one thing you gotta be very careful about is enemy medium tanks and enemy neo tanks. Medium tanks actually do 45% damage against cruisers which is quite devastating. And Neo tanks are even worse. They deal 50%. So if you actually have your cruiser snail land, these units can take a big chunk out of their HP, which is really scary. And even more egregious is the rocket. The rocket will absolutely annihilate the cruiser, dealing 85% damage to it. So you have to take care and keep your cruisers out of enemy uh, indirects. They will absolutely destroy them. So you gotta be very careful in this regard. The cruiser is an extremely frail unit. It deals with submarines and it somewhat deals with air units and it kind of gets slaughtered by everything else. So yeah, things are not looking very good for the cruiser so far, but if the enemy has submarines, it's kind of tricky to counter submarines with just submarines of your own. So that means that you kind of have to rely on the cruiser in naval warfare, whether you want it or not. However, the cruiser has some nice abilities, a few abilities that people are not aware of. A little bit of cruiser trivia uh, provided to me by the one and only Cardle. The cruiser actually has an unused animation in the game where it directs its anti-air gun forward and shoots at land units. And if you hack the game, you can actually hack this weapon in, meaning that the cruiser can deal with land units. Um, this was probably something that they intended to give it, but they decided to take it out. It's a big shame, because if cruisers were actually able to damage land units, they might actually have been a little bit more viable. But yeah, no, they took that out, sadly. However, one ability which did make it into the game, which uh, I think most people know this, but I remember back when I did my Advanced Wars 1 Let's Play, and I demonstrated this in the, Gre or the mission against Drake, a lot of people were shocked to learn that you can actually garrison battlecopters and transport copters inside cruisers. 
you can garrison up to two units in one cruiser, actually. And not only that, the cruisers will also resupply them fully at the start of their turn. And this actually does have some application. Um, I will show you here a scenario that is very similar to what happened in my Yellow Comet uh, playthrough uh, in my recent Advanced Wars 2 Let's Play. There was a fighter that threatened to shoot down both of my battlecopters, and because fighters are faster than battlecopters, uh, my battlecopters wouldn't be able to get out of the way in time. So they are basically sitting ducks for this fighter. But if you have a cruiser nearby, you can essentially load the battlecopters onto the uh, uh, onto the cruiser. You can drive away, and you can unload them in the same turn, getting them out of range of the fighter. And this is kind of nice. This actually does have a number of very decent applications. Like, for example, you can load units or your infantry into transport copters, like this, and then you can double load the transport copters into cruisers, and then you can move the cruisers to extend the range of your transport copters. Sadly, you can't then unleash the infantry from the transport copters, although that would be pretty epic. But this just goes to show that there definitely are some applications uh, with transport copters, battle copters, and cruisers. Which is why I think it's such a shame that the only naval commander in the game has weak air units. Because there actually is some good synergy here. Uh, you know, like battle copters and transport copters and cruisers, if they were cheaper, that is. Uh, there's actually some uh, amazing abilities for some really cool plays with these two units, but because Drake never fields uh, air units, you never get to see this aspect of him. Now, one myth which I did see a lot of people comment on, and I wanted to demonstrate this uh, in this uh, video, I've heard a lot of comments from people saying that you can load your own battlecopters and transport copters into an allied cruiser. And I tested this out in all the games. Uh, this is sadly false. I don't know why this myth has spread like wildfire in my comment section. Uh, I haven't checked Days of Ruin to see if you're able to do it there, but I, I somehow doubt it. Uh, Wargroove was the first game I saw of that kind where you could actually load your units into other uh, players' uh, transports. But no, as you can see right here, you definitely cannot move units into an allied uh, cruiser. And these two guys are allied, by the way. I made sure of that before I started the map. So, I, just a little bit of misinformation that I wanted to correct because I see this common pop-up every now and then. So, um, yeah, the cruiser, not a great unit. Uh, as you can see, it has a lot of weaknesses. It can resupply, though, which is kind of nice. But overall, it's uh, very overpriced for what it does. And uh, whenever you are forced to deploy it, it's more out of necessity than any desire to actually use the cruiser. I think the cruiser is a really cool unit. And I will say, uh, one thing that is actually incredibly important to mention is that they did buff the cruiser pretty heavily in uh, Dual Strike. In, uh, I will show the damage values with a healthy Battlecopter over here. So, um, in Dual Strike, they actually did... Uh, looks like Andy doesn't have any Battlecopters. <laughs> uh, in Dual Strike, they did actually uh, buff the Cruiser ever so slightly. It's a lot more durable. Um, uh, while Battlecopters do baseline 55% damage to Cruisers in Advanced Wars 1 and 2, this was actually reduced to 25% in Dual Strike. Uh, and the cruiser also received some slight resistance to rockets and artillery and some other units as well. I also do believe that medium tanks and tanks also deal less damage to cruisers in Dual Strike. So Dual Strike, they definitely buffed the cruiser a little bit in terms of its numbers. However, they kept its awful price at 18,000, and I don't really know why they insisted on doing that. Um, I also do know that the cruiser is a little bit stronger in uh, Days of Ruin, but the price, I do believe, has remained pretty consistent between all the games. It might be a little bit cheaper in that game. I don't remember off the top of my head. This is most of the series where we focus on Advanced Wars 1 and 2. But I will mention Dual Strike and Days of Ruin every now and then, because I know some people are curious to know about that as well. But those aren't the games that these videos are primarily focused on. But yeah, to quickly summarize, the Cruiser is a very overpriced unit. It's not very good at what it does. Uh, it has a ton of weaknesses. It's very frail. Um, and the only like good thing that it does is hunt submarines. So as long as there aren't submarines on the map, there's not a really good reason to build cruisers. Which is a shame, because I think the ability to load transport and battlecopters onto them is incredibly cool, and it's something that I wish more players would take advantage of uh, in matches. I've actually had a couple of moments playing against my friends where I've utilized this little trick uh, to save a couple of transport copters from crashing, and I must admit it felt really good when it happened, but those moments are very few and uh, far between. So this is where I'd like to ask you guys. 
What do you guys think about the cruiser? What could be done to fix it aside from just reducing its costs? Um, I think that the cruiser is an interesting unit and I would love to see it played with more in Advanced Wars. And yeah, just want to hear what you guys think. Uh, do you think it just needs a buff to its stance or just would a reduction in price do it? I think honestly, if the cruiser's cost was halved down to 9,000, it would probably be pretty viable, depending on the map. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let me know in the comment section which unit you want to see me talk about next. And I uh, hope you guys enjoy the series. I'm certainly enjoying making it. Anyway, give a like and a comment, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.